Hi, I'm Jeff Palomo with Palomo & Associates. We are your estate planning and elder law firm. In this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about revocable living trusts, what they are and what they're commonly used for, and also, you know, maybe why they're not quite as used or as important as they used to be, or what people think they are. A trust is a contract between three parties. The grantor, the person who creates it, the trustee, the person who controls it, and the beneficiary, the person who receives it. Now, in a revocable trust, you can be all three, right? You can be the creator, the controller, and the receiver. And it's completely revocable. You can change your mind, you can get rid of the trust, you can change the terms of the trust, you can do anything you want. But the biggest thing is that with a revocable trust, you do not get asset protection. There is no asset protection with revocable trusts. Jeff, I heard from a very popular pundit who said you did. I understand that. And I know that there's some misinformation out there, but by law and by definition, it can't provide creditor protection. Why? Debtor creditor law says that whatever access the debtor has, the creditor also has. So if you're able to just revoke it and take it all and give it right back to yourself, so can the creditor. So why might we do a revocable trust? To avoid probate. For every asset that you own in your name alone, you're gonna have to go through probate. Which means if you have property in Pennsylvania, Maryland, Florida, and Texas, you're gonna have to go through four probates, hire four attorneys, and pay four different taxes potentially. So one main reason why we use revocable trusts is to just avoid having to go through probate in those different states. But remember, not for asset protection purposes, all right? It doesn't do that. The other thing we use it for a lot lately is for disability planning. Yes, if you have assets in your name alone, you can have a power of attorney. When you die, the executor takes over. But as you can imagine, with the state's rule book, there can be rules that we don't all agree with or that we don't all want to abide by. And there can be restrictions and then you have to go to court and maybe you have to go to a guardianship hearing in front of a judge. So we're seeing a lot more revocable trust being used as a disability tool because the trust itself governs all of the terms. It is the contract with your family to tell everyone what to do, when to do it and how to do it. So if somebody becomes a little loony and they're not able to act as a trustee anymore, there's gonna be a disability panel built right into the trust that's gonna allow family members to determine if and when that person is not acting in the best interest and simply have them removed. They don't have to go hire lawyers and go into court and do a guardianship hearing. That's ridiculous. There's also something called a trust protector, which is typically the law firm. And the law firm will be able to step in and remove somebody if they're not acting in the best interest of the trust. Again, you don't wanna to have to hire lawyers and go into court and have a judge make those decisions. Let's just have the trust itself take care of all of that. So I hope this video helped. You learned what a tr revocable trust is. You learned when it's commonly used and under what reasons and also what it's not. It's not an asset protection tool. Thank you very much.